The House is expected to take up the PRO Act this week. That, that, is, that stands for protecting the right to organize. Now, we know President Biden has endorsed this bill. Here to talk a little bit more about this and why he is critical of the bill that is being considered by the House this week. We want to bring in Jay Timmons. He's the president and CEO of the National Association of Manufacturers. And Jay, it's great to speak with you again. So we have the PRO Act. The House is expected to vote on this this week. You're critical of the bill. Manufacturers, you say, have deep concerns when it comes to the PRO Act. Why? Well, unfortunately, although this is clearly a, a bill that has good intentions, it's going to have ill effects. Um, we've worked so hard over the course of, of many years, but especially in the last year, Shauna, uh, to ensure that the relationship between um, employers and employees, making sure in the manufacturing sector, as bad as the economy got right at the beginning of the pandemic, that we could preserve as many jobs as possible, keep people on the payroll, and ensure their health and their safety. That relationship is so strong and it is so positive. The, the PRO Act, unfortunately, would disrupt 70 years of labor law, 70 years of settled labor law, and it would take away the, it would take away a lot of the rights that workers have to, to, uh, to anonymity, and it might put pressure on them when it comes to the question of forming a union. We don't have any problems with unions being formed, but let's do it in the way that is tried and true, has been has been in effect for 70 years and has been quite successful, quite frankly. Um, why disrupt that apple cart when we have such a strong and positive relationship between employers and employees? Jay, I'm going to play the devil's advocate, and you are a friend of this program, and we always I, appreciate I, your being here. I would but different, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that the response for those who want to upset the apple cart would be, for instance, union fees and state right to work laws, because this legislation, if it became law, would allow unions and employers to agree to collect union dues or fees, whether I'm a member of the union. This was an issue of several years, not several, like two or three years ago. So essentially, I work at a company, it's organized, but I choose not to be in the union. I don't have to pay the membership fees. If this became law, would I have to pay the union dues even if I'm not a member? Yeah, so look, I, I come from a right to work state. I worked for a governor uh, who was very pro right to work. And you know that right to work um, um, uh, protection, if you will, uh, kind of guarantees that if you don't want to be a part of a union, if you want to negotiate for your own wages and benefits, you can do that. And to me, that's the American way. That is not to say that if others who want to be a part of the union and be a part of a collective bargaining union a unit, they they can do so. And it gives it gives workers the ability to make that choice or not make that choice. So uh, you know, I I'm afraid I I simply don't buy that argument. And I think the real issue that those who support the PRO Act have right now is uh, we just released, uh, and the reason you're even asking me about this is because we just released the results of our first quarter uh, survey of manufacturers, and we have we have a very, very high um, uh, percentage of, of optimism right now among manufacturers. It's 88%. And this is the first mark of the Biden administration. Manufacturers are very excited about what they see happening with this administration in terms of getting the pandemic under control and working to you know, working to 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 build a better America. It's up from 76 percent at the end of the last quarter in 2020, and it's up 54 points percentage points since the first uh, survey of the pandemic. This type of positive momentum can just be thrown askew a, a if these types okay. of controversial measures are enacted. Right. Um, I think it's 130 different organizations uh, nationwide have actually signed a letter opposing the PRO Act. There is another part of this law that would prohibit um, cl joint class and collective actions and arbitration agreements. Why are the manufacturers opposed to that? Because um, we hear a lot of backlash these days about as a, as a worker, I give up my rights to take the job and I get thrown into arbitration immediately. It, would this be the appropriate reaction? Why are the manage, why is management or manufacturers opposed to it? So uh, I, I, I worry quite frankly about tying down employers, employees with um, 
um, unnecessary or or multiple um, or time consuming legal suits. Arbitration has worked very well uh, over the past. Now, I will say in some cases it doesn't work particularly well. Um, I've been on the other end of that where it hasn't worked well, not in terms of an employment issue, but in terms of contractual issues. So, so look, I mean, arbitration can can uh, uh, it can be a 50 50 proposition, but you kind of start from the same basis point and you, you, you try to work things through without a lot of costly legal fees. Um, I, I, think, I think that probably is um, um, why a lot of manufacturers have some concerns. The biggest concern for me, quite frankly, Adam, is what, what workers give up um, and what employers give up, what employers and employees both give up if the PRO Act becomes law in terms of secrecy, in terms of um, the ability, unfortunately, to be intimidated um, or coerced into signing a piece of paper that forces yeah. a union vote. All of those things uh, create a, a dynamic that's just not productive. Jay, we only have about a minute here, but I just want to get your thoughts. This week marks 50 days of the Biden presidency. What are your reactions outside of the PRO Act of the policies that he has endorsed, the policies that he has implemented over the past 50 days? And what do you hope to see over the next 50 days? Look, I have to give him very, very high marks. Um, this president uh, is doing what he said he would do. There haven't been surprises. The PRO Act didn't surprise me, quite frankly, his endorsement of that. I don't agree with it. Um, but he started very, very strong in terms of trying to make sure that we get this pandemic under control, to connect with the American people about the emotional distress that we've all been through over the course of the last one year uh, because of the pandemic, um, the sacrifices that we've all made in terms of family members that we've lost or in terms of jobs that we've lost or in terms of economic opportunities that we've lost and in terms of just normal life. And he's connected with the American people in a way that we haven't seen in a while. So I greatly appreciate that. Um, we, we're very happy with his focus on immigration, on infrastructure, on trade, concerns on energy production, concerns obviously with the PRO Act. But, you know, all in all, uh, we're not going to agree with everything, uh, but we really appreciate the fact that the, this administration has invited us in to provide our perspective. They don't always agree with us, but they've given us a seat at the table to at least have a civil discussion. I give them high marks for that. Jay, we always welcome you back on the program here to let us know about those discussions and, of course, give us an update on whatever you are watching. Jay Timmons, always great to have you, president and CEO of the National Association of Manufacturers.